Okay, let's go. Let me just try and squeeze this out. So I I used to track. I know you used to track markets. I think it's no, no, uh, the auto sector for the longest time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've done a lot of interviews like this in the car. Auto is the only thing I I didn't do. Otherwise, all unsecured loans, mortgages, SME, construction finance, everything I built for Kotak. Oh, really? I'm like a management trainee who grew to become the MD in so Kotak. Twenty-five so, years yeah, over there. Wow. Years. Wonderful place. I'm whatever, sure. Whatever I am as a professional is credited to that place. So why did you leave then? Yeah, they could get you get closer to 50 and then you know you want to do something bigger, better. So something I, bigger or you I, want to slow down? No, no, something bigger was the starting point. So, uh, Kamlesh, have you been to the coastal road? No. Neither have I actually. I've never seen it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought it opened just day before yesterday. No, it it's been over a month now, and I've been waiting to go. So I thought, ah. chalo, let's go on the coastal road. I went once, and then they had shut the road there. So I I have no idea that it's opened. I saw videos, huh. but these days, you know, with WhatsApp, what videos go around? Sometimes you're not sure whether <laughs> yeah. all of it is true or yeah. not true. And so let's find out real time what this coastal road yep. is all about, and yeah. let's also talk a lot about. Um, something which everybody is focusing on these days right retirement planning i i don't know how uh, how tough it is for youngsters today but way back when i started investing it was fairly easy cost of living was low markets were rallying there was a big bull market 10 15 years ago uh, do you think now things are different i'm not sure i think the uh, market may be at a different place but i think the size of the opportunity from when you started from when i started The size of the opportunity is actually bigger. Really? Uh, you know, when we started, we were always not sure about whether this will be a one-way street. Will we always keep getting bigger? We've seen times where things have gone up, things have gone down. But if you look at last four years, five years, six years, uh, I mean, just uh, ignore COVID for a time frame. But otherwise, markets have been pretty stable. I'm saying profits are looking better, uh, companies are looking stronger. You look at regulatory interventions which are happening. Yeah. How much better? I I think the opportunity for youngsters or people who want to really invest and create wealth for themselves, maybe the landscape for them is significantly better than what it was for you and me so many years back. You think so? I actually think so. But cost of living has also gone up a lot, right? I mean, for example, if you have if you're like have a thirty year old, I was checking uh, around in my office as well about uh, on an average the salaries are seventy eighty thousand per month. Most of these people are paying rent. uh so in hand the when if rent in a metro like mumbai is like 40 50000 goes in your monthly expenses in hand you barely get what 20000 a month now in that how do you invest where do you spend how do you make you know uh, time for your other activities and i mean it's a, it's a bit of a struggle i feel whatever salary you are at you know if you can control your income to expense ratio you you, you look at say if you apply for a home loan all of them look at what they call foer which is called the fixed obligation to income ratio mm. yeah if you are in the range if you are say at 60 70% uh, uh, expenses which means you have 30% of disposable income available you actually get a home loan sanction that's the premise on which home loans get approved today i think for youngsters uh, if you fix that to say i need to make sure whatever i make 20% will always be available to invest it could be 20 it could be 30 it could be 40 depending on whatever range you take whether it is 70 80 or 100000 that people make i think But you have to is 70000 rupees salary per month break it up for me how much should i invest how much should i uh, because taking into consideration that most of these people live on rent right as so i have a view on rent you know i have been a very <laughs> strong uh, uh, opponent of uh, uh, rent I, i i i always think that when you have a cash flow that you are giving to somebody uh doesn't matter who it is if you're not creating an asset out of it that money is really wasted uh because finally you pay that for 15 years 20 years my sense is if you pay it for 15 20 years you will be able to create a 50 lakh to 75 lakh asset uh, for you for sure but if mm. you pay the same rent for the same 10 15 years and keep paying the rent you don't create any asset for yourself mm. but i think if there is a young investor in mind he has to put that pressure to say 15 20% of my money has to be planned for investment i don't think there's an option there's no other way you can create uh, wealth for yourself right mm. so i think it's going to be a matter of financial discipline but uh, if 
you don't get this right, I think it's very important. You know, you have another problem. Uh, I was at some meeting where people were discussing about uh, what will I leave behind. Uh, you know, and, and very reasonably affluent people were talking about what will they leave behind. And I went to that podium and said, hey, you know, you start at 25, 30. Till 40, you're bothered about your new kid that is born, the house that you want to buy, and your the car loan EMI that you want to do. Yeah. And suddenly at 45, you start getting thinking about, you know, uh, what will I leave behind? But in India today, with health getting so much better, mortality rates getting so much better, there's going to be a period between 60 and 80 where you will have a life to live for yourself. Correct. I don't know how many people are thinking about longevity is also becoming a Becoming huge, so much yeah. higher. So have you planned for what your life will be between 60 and 80? Then talk about what will you leave behind. Glad you brought that out actually. Retiring at 40, right? I mean, is it a dream or is it feasible in today's day and age? Let's be honest because I mean, I'm almost 40. So I don't know if I can retire because I have a kid. I have a lot of expenses which are just piling up living in a metro like Mumbai. But let's talk about this. Retiring at 40, is it feasible? Is it just a dream? You know, I think it's a dream. Yeah, because it will happen to only a few <laughs> Thanks people. Thanks for bursting my bubble. <laughs> it will happen, happen to a few people, guys who got it right with some startup, knocked it off at a point of time. Because, see, for retirement, I think, you know, I have this classical debate to say, what do you look at? You need wealth or you need income? Yeah, because these two are different. Yeah. Uh, if you think you've created wealth enough till 40 and therefore you think you can retire and live, I'm saying it's also a scary thought because wealth can go up and wealth can go down. Yeah. Whatever is a comfortable life for you at that point of time, if you have two times of that as a cash flow available to you. Cash flow means what? Means income stream available to you. Okay, like passive income. Uh, yeah, re regular recurring income out of your investments. Hmm. So it's not wealth. Okay. okay. Because wealth you can't keep consuming for uh, so, you know every every year's wealth if you think you're going to use for uh, taking care of your needs I don't think uh, it's happening that way hmm. but if you are having a steady stream of income double of what your comfortable cost of living is at that point of time for the next whatever years of your longevity is when perhaps you have a great chance of saying I can uh, so retire. when you say steady stream of income what is it what is it income from your mutual funds is it passive income uh, through dividend yielding stocks, what do you define a steady stream of income apart from you know your salaried job or say, business? Say typically uh, a lot of people have different modes of looking at what they need to do for planning for their annuity. Uh, PPF accumulation is one, you wouldn't do much if you're getting out at 40 or 45. Uh, NPS is another form, you wouldn't get much if you're getting out at 40 or 45. I think if you put money in dividend yielding stocks, if you have a portfolio like that, uh, if you have mutual fund SIPs, corpus that you have built, which is again uh, fixed income yielding mutual fund returns that you have, or there are products of insurance that allow you to plan for your annuity over a period of the next 30, 40 years, because uh, the other thing that insurance does is there are products which guarantee you the interest what you are going to get for next 30, 40 years. So that's another form that interest rate may not be very high, but because it is tax efficient, you may still get about 8-9% return for the next 30 or 40 years guaranteed from insurance companies. If you are able to create that kind of stream of income, then I think retirement uh, at any point of time is possible. By the way, we've reached Narman point. Imagine really? that. Wow. That was so quick. This was a See? very nice drive. Huh? This was a really nice drive, yeah. But the problem is now on the way back, we can't take this road. <laughs> it's oh, only one it's way. One way. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, hopefully the traffic will be uh, yeah. not there on the yeah. other side yeah. of the road. So let's talk about your personal finance journey. You started, you said at the age of 30, you bought your first house. Yep. Okay, where was this? Andheri. Okay. And you that was the house you lived in? That was the house I lived in. And you bought it on loan? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. What was the MI that you were paying per month? At that time, uh, I was paying about 25, 30,000 EMI at a salary of mine of maybe the same, 55, 60,000. What are you saying? Yeah. Okay, okay. So your flat, uh, how much did you buy the property for? At that time, I bought it for 25 lakhs. No way! 
<laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. How unaffordable Bombay's become. But that time, my salary was in the same range that you are saying, right? You're giving the same example to say what salary range you have and how much of that you are. But no, at that time, you your salary was in the range of fifty, sixty thousand per month, and yep. you were buying a property worth twenty five lakhs. Yeah, Today, okay. if people who have salary in fifty, sixty thousand per month, you can't get a property less than one and a half CR, no, in Bombay. Yeah, but I'm saying Bombay is still the misnomer, right? Yeah. So Bombay, Delhi, perhaps is still the misnomer. It's so not that bad. Basically, don't live in Bombay. <laughs> it's not that bad in Pune. The same, the same equation in Pune will not be that bad, or any parts of Gujarat will not that be bad. Any parts of North will not be bad outside Delhi. Calcutta will be possible. Yeah. So. But there's something. You can't. There's something about Bombay, right? <laughs> yeah, people who live in Bombay, there's something magical. You can crib, but it's uh, you when you when I travel a lot. I'm out about ten, twelve days a month. But you know, when you're back to Bombay, it's like yeah. a very different feeling. It's a very yeah. different feeling. It's un. You can't explain it. Really. Yeah, yeah, you can't explain. But having said that, it has become very hard to yeah, very difficult. function in Bombay given the kind of traffic, pollution, yeah. number, just sheer number of people, right? Yeah, but you know, I I I always tell you, a lot of youngsters join us. Um, At different points of time, fresh chartered accountants join at that kind of salary. My experience is, you know, don't procrastinate. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter how much is the amount. But I think you got to start quickly. Start at a younger age. It doesn't matter whether it's five thousand, ten thousand. I I don't think it matters at all. Mm-hmm. If you start earlier, I think it makes a hell lot of difference. Now, people who started in two thousand twenty, uh, say SIPs, markets were at uh, eight thousand, nine thousand. The market is at twenty-three thousand or twenty-two thousand today. So I'm yeah. saying, you just can't time it. If you if you start early, I think, don't wait for starting. If a small proportions doesn't matter. You take any time frame of ten years, mm. equity has never lost money. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There'll be time frames of two years, one year, three years where you will see ups and downs. But I think over a ten-year time frame, equity has never lost money. Correct. And there can't be a better time in India than now uh, to take that punt uh, for sure because there is huge amount of stability and I don't think it's going away in a hurry anyway. Okay. So I think it's a great idea because the reason I have a problem with fixed deposit is not because FDs is not a good haven for investment. The issue is average returns of five six percent in a country where inflation is five six percent is keeping the money in the same place, right? So uh, a lot of people ask me this question to say, do you need to build a uh, You know, uh, some money which you can draw during a bad time. Mm. Okay, uh, for that you want to create a corpus of a fixed deposit. So because you can get like an, an emergency fund. emergency fund, so you can draw a, a line against that. But technically, in all your investments that you do, even if it's a mutual fund, even if you put money in any other form of investments it's, like it's insurance, it's, it's liquid. liquid. Yeah. Okay. So when you were thirty, you said you bought your first house worth about twenty-five lakhs, and yeah. you were paying an EMI. Yeah. Uh, at that point, along with paying your EMI, were you also investing in the market? At that point of time, no. Okay. Yeah. So I I think when you create a debt like that, no. Uh, you work a little harder to make sure you can knock off your debt over a period of time. Mm. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, I, I firmly believe that wealth is made only out of investments. So mm. You can't make wealth out of your salary, right? Correct. Uh, you have to invest to be able to make that. I mean, I was lucky when I started that we had ESOPs and ESOPs did well and 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 so on and so forth. But as soon as I was comfortable with the EMI that I was paying, uh, I started then putting money into SIPs. So when I had a loan, I bought an equal amount of uh, insurance for it. Uh, term loan. Term term, term insurance, insurance, term insurance linked to my home loan, okay. which keeps going down as the home loan keeps going down. Okay. So at any point of time, my outstanding home loan uh. was covered by the insurance that I bought. So if something happened to me, I didn't want to leave a loan behind for somebody to take care of. Mm. Yeah. So what chunk of your overall portfolio is in real estate, and how much is in equities? So I am either in equities or I am in real estate. So, uh, uh, I sixty percent of my money is sixty sixty five percent of my money is in equity. Okay. And uh, the balance thirty forty percent of my money is in real estate. Okay, not bad. And at that time, at the age of thirty, you had no SIPs, no equity investment. So, when did you start your equity journey? My equity journey started about three four years after. Uh, because in three four years, the EMI was uh, very comfortable. Mm. So my salaries kept going up. uh and therefore once i knew that out of my corpus apart from the home loan home loan now i have a opportunity to start investing is when sip started that's when mutual fund started and then because i was closer to financial services uh, you know 
I understood equity well and uh, all the wealth that I would have created has been out of uh, equity. So slowly and steadily when I understood that business well, I kept reducing my concentration on uh, uh, mutual fund SIPs and shifted to direct equity. Oh, uh, okay. Time. Okay. So direct equities. So what is your split now between mutual funds and direct equity? Direct equity, you mean you buy the shares directly, yes. right? Just for the harm. Yes. So my, I mean, like I said, uh, mutual fund used to be a large part. Today, it won't be even 5-10% of my. Uh, really? Uh, okay. And all your uh, picks are your own? Yeah, if you're there in financial services, yeah, all your picks are uh, your own. You you stay focused on companies that give you decent return, large large cap stories. Large cap stories. Uh, yeah, some reasonable large uh, mid cap companies. So those have been my, my focus. So. so actually, if you think of it, you started your investing journey quite late, right? I mean, 35 is when you started investing in equities, but that's also because you bought your home before that. So for someone who's looking to build a life around uh, in this city, you think with a 50, 60,000 rupee uh, salary per month or 70, 80,000, the first focus area should be to buy a home and then look at risky assets. Is that the right way to look at it even in today's day and age? Uh, because I, you clearly can't do both. As you said, I mean, if you're taking on debt, your first objective should be to clear your debt, right? I think it's a function of the uh, uh, view of the person to say. As long as, like I said, Whatever you are paying, uh, you are creating an asset early, I think it's absolutely fine. You don't want to take a house, you want to start putting money in SIP, I think it's a great idea uh, if you start early. But just remember that the rents that you are paying are perpetual cash outflows which are not creating an asset. So as long as you are sure about that, uh, as long as you know that you have told yourself that, and as long as you tell yourself that I will start investing early and maybe five years later I will consume the asset. Mm. Uh, I will build the home for myself. So I am not always saying that you have to always get the home first. But you can't be paying rent for perpetuity till you are 50. Right? Because 20 years you paid rent and where is all the money gone? You haven't created anything against it. Correct. So anything you would do differently in your journey if you had to go back in time? You know, I, I, I say this now in hindsight, you know, which is how people uh, even do views on markets. It is so much <laughs> easier when you have data. But I always tell the younger people, all the people that have worked with me who created their house and properties, I've always asked them to stretch. You know, when I bought a house, I could have bought something bigger mm. if I had a view on stretching myself mm. because I was not investing anything. Should I have bought a 25 lakh house at that point of time or should I have bought a 35 lakh house at that point of time? Mm. Because that appreciation of that house is the highest in my uh, entire portfolio. Okay. Yeah? So, uh, and I ask telling people that, you know, differentiate needs and wants. Mm. Okay. So when you buy an asset which can appreciate, stretch yourself. Don't do that when you're buying a car, yeah, because that is only going to depreciate over a period of time. So okay. don't try and buy a bigger car than your means, but if you can buy a bigger house than your means, I think it's still a great idea uh, to do that. So if I go back, I think I would have bought a bigger house, bigger house at that point of time uh, uh, when I started. Okay, so before we end, uh, a quick rapid fire. Keep your answers uh, spicy and quick. Uh, early retirement or work till 60? What do you prefer? Work till 60. Okay. Reasons? Enjoy work. Uh, <laughs> life will be in good state, both your health and mind if you are working longer. That's, uh, that's fair advice. Advice you would give your younger self? Advice I would give my younger self? Uh, push yourself uh, uh, a little more for creating a little more portfolio for investments. Okay. Start investing early. Start investing early. Okay. How much do I need to retire at 40? Like I said, if you, whatever is good life at 40, if you have a stream of income, double of that for the balanced part of your life, then you can retire for sure. Okay. Two reasons why a person under the age of 35 need, doesn't plan for retirement. Home loan and car loan. <laughs> He's stuck forever paying that. Yeah, at that point of time, you're paying your home loan and car loan. So, you can't think of retirement at all. Okay. Three reasons why it's important to not be able to withdraw from your retirement kitty. I don't think you should ever retire because you don't create one. So, I think you should never do any uh, uh, removal of money from your retirement kitty because inflation is here to stay. It's going to go at 5% every year. 
health is going to get worse and therefore the cost of health is going to be uh, even more uh, over a period of time and the compounding impact of what you save is so high that you will lose all of it if you withdraw even a small ounce of money from that at, at different points. People decide to do early retirement, then what should the split be? How much of my corpus should I use for my monthly expenses? How much should I allow to grow? What is the ideal split? For early retirement? Yeah. I think you have to have a reasonable amount of wealth that you create uh, to be able to do early retirement. And uh, I get worried when you say early, whether again it's 40, 50, 60, I, I'm, I'm not I don't really think sure. early retirement uh, is 50 for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying even at 60, if you have to retire, I think it's, uh, you got, you, I think India, you have to worry about your cost of living between 60 and 80. I think you peak. Uh, your kind of life, uh, the way you live at about 50. So you get to all enjoying everything, all the benefits that you've worked for at about 50. Uh, you have to have a corpus, uh, which is 50% of what you've created can be used for your uh, spending. Mm. And the balance 50 will still need to accumulate because you're going to live longer in India uh, for sure. Today, if you have to retire, can you live the rest of your life with your corpus? Fortunately, I can. Okay. Uh, uh, fortunately, I can. But like I said, uh, uh, my idea of retirement is uh, you may you may not have a nine to eight job, okay, but you got to keep doing something, right? I'm saying at different points of time, life has been nice to you, fair to you. Uh, you've got so much from society. There may be a point of time after sixty, I'd like to give, give back, back to society. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, financially free, yes, but uh, keep working. Okay. I think that's the best thing you can do in life. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Kamlesh. It was a pleasure speaking to you and it was really fun. Finally, I saw the coastal road and I got the opportunity to meet you. I must tell you, this is the first time I've done an interview in a moving car. <laughs> Were you and slightly I, worried about how it's going to go yeah, and with me driving yeah, and all the yeah, cameras yeah, and everything? Yeah, if you get into a car, it's uh, uh, being driven by you. Yeah. <laughs> That's another one. And you know, normally when you get to interviews, you're always worried about which camera. Which camera you see? Now you see like camera. <laughs> so, you know, it's like a different experience, but I enjoyed it uh, for sure. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. It was a very nice chat. And hopefully we'll get to chat a lot more in future. Thank you. To learn the complete end-to-end -end blueprint on how to master your finances, join our personal finance masterclass CNBC TV 18 Accelerate on the 11th of May at 9 a.m. To register, log on to cnbctv18.com and we will see you on the 11th of May.